Well, um, our next speaker is Chris Benedict, um, who's actually going to be talking about a lot of the work going on in Washington here. Um, Chris Benedict is a professor and regional extension specialist with Washington State University in Whatcom County and is the WC lead of the Washington Soil Health Initiative. So Chris is going to be discussing an overview of so the Soil Health Initiative's activities to date. Okay, you can hear me, Deirdre, right? Yes, Okay. Thank you. One sec. Typical screen share issues. Okay, you should be able to see that now. We are seeing the presenter view. Oh, you are. <laughs> Lovely. Um, okay, that should be good, right, Deirdre? Okay, so um, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, and point out that today is 2-2-22, um, and it also happens to be a Tuesday. So all corny jokes aside, um, I'm going to talk about the Washington Soil Health Initiative. I think several of you are probably cognizant of this effort, um, but I think um, it, several of you might not be, and I think we really need to celebrate the um, sort of the onboarding of this of this um, effort. Um, and I do want to point out that I'm speaking, but I'm also speaking for on behalf of the two other leads at the other agencies, uh, Danny Gillardi and Allison Helper. And so um, I'll be sharing their contact information um, and uh, a little bit later. So let's uh, let's jump in. <clears throat> so. The Soil Health Initiative uh, started to kind of amalgamate in 2018, um, and funding from the state, um, sort of in a, an entry phase, began in 2019. Um, and that first initial phase really targeted efforts um, on a few different things. But ultimately, with um, essentially full funding coming online about um, close to eight months ago, um, Washington State uh, went, it, it entered into uh, a dramatic paradigm shift um, in the amount of my, the, the resources that are invested in soil research, outreach, and incentive programs. And I'm going to go into depth in, about that here in a second. But um, it created a tri-agency framework for a coordinated effort, um, and it accelerated soil health as a priority issue at the state level. Um, and it virtually overnight placed Washington State as one of the preeminent leaders in state-supported soil health activities. Um, and um, it utilizes new, but also, or it, it, excuse me, utilizes existing, but also new uh, soil capacity in the state. Um, and most interestingly, it creates the most densely concentrated network of long-term agroecological research and extension experiments um, that I'll talk about a little bit more in a second. And relative to the discussion that was just occurring, it also incentivizes landowners to undertake soil health practices, um, or at least that's the intention. <clears throat> so uh, as I mentioned, this is a tri-agency effort um, that uh, focuses on um, with, uh, that includes the Washington State Conservation Commission, uh, the Washington State Department of Agriculture and WSU. Um, and each one of these agencies has a unique role and I believe they're very complementary. Um, but uh, the State Conservation Commission, um, the vision is that uh, they would provide technical support and incentivize uh, adoption um, and increase outreach efforts. Um, WSDA um, would track and demonstrate progress at the statewide level and work across regulatory programs again at the state level. And WSU's role is, um, was at least from the onset, was to develop a soil health roadmap um, that I'll talk about here in a second. But also, and probably in the bigger picture and longer term, is to drive research and information dissemination. Um, and this is where these LTERs, as, as we're calling them, um, come into play. But um, the three agencies work together in concert. Um, and I think that these each one of these efforts is by design is really quite complementary. 
So let me talk about the Soil uh, State, um, Washington State Soil Health Roadmap. Um, I'll just point out that you can reach it on, at soilhealth.wsu.edu or by um, taking a photo of that QR code with your phone. This was an effort that uh, began in 2019. Um, it was led by WSU, but contributed by many others. Um, and process is that we broke the state into um, sort of focused production zones. And these areas, um, these are sort of larger um, production uh, systems that are similar. And um, in that area, we utilize existing resources to document a variety of different um, things like uh, what are some goals for that particular production system? What are the problems? How do we incentivize? How do we change things? And sort of to set up milestones as we go forward. Um, and those, each one of those per, uh, sort of focus areas was led by a different individual at WSU. Um, and uh, beyond that, we encompassed and sort of summarized um, sort of similar themes across those focus areas. Um, to us that, that's included in the roadmap. It's a it's a 126 page document, so it's not a it's not a a, a quick read. Uh, but there are some executive summaries, and I would really um, uh, hope that people get to check it out. I will point out that it is a living document, and it's it's done this by design. When we change goals, we change milestones. We're going to update this document, and um, so what I urge to people, while it is a PDF is that to not necessarily download it and sort of store it away, but view it, access the content you want. And then when you need to re-access it to, to, to go back to the website to do that. <clears throat> One of the other uh, big efforts that started in 2019, I believe it might have been 2020, I'm losing track of the years, um, is a state of the soils assessment. And this was done um, in concert between WSDA and WSU. And sort of this is a, a sort of a, an effort to track soil health over time um, across, you know, the variety of production systems that exist in the state. Um, and to date, the initiative has created um, nearly 400 samples from, um, excuse me, 400 fields from 20 different cropping systems. Um, initially is to develop a baseline understanding of soil health, uh, sort of what is the, the state where we're at. But in long run is to sort of monitor that um, and to determine, you know, if we're making um, incremental changes and improvements. Thirdly, is to kind of develop a soil health scoring curve. Um, for those of you that don't know what these are, these are kind of specific to production systems and soils. Um, and more information um, can be uh, obtained about that um, through some of the context that I'll share here at the end. Um, and uh, another goal is to try to determine specifically what measurements um, are, are, re are relevant for specific soils and cropping systems. And in the long run is to develop a soil health database uh, that could be accessible um, by people. <clears throat> so let's, um, let's switch gears and talk about the LTERs or the Long-Term Agroecological Research and Extension Sites. Um, one of the key issues that soil scientists deal with um, to some of the questions that John was just talking about is that much, much of the research is sort of short-term funded. And a lot of the changes that we see in soils needs time. And so sort of core to the, the initiative is to provide funding for several LTER sites across the state of Washington. And as I mentioned, as far as I can tell, it, the state sort of becomes in a short order, the most densely concentration of these, um, at least in the US, uh, but they represent major cropping systems. Um, and we, um, they, they will specifically be located on WCU owned property so that that longevity can, can play out. And they're designed with input from adv uh, local advisory groups. Um, and they, they're really, fascinating thing is that they are funded in perpetuity, or at least that's the goal. Um, we just went through a process internally to try to determine which sites would be brought online in the short term. And uh, in, in two, 2022, um, we're starting to move forward on four sites. Um, one that actually started in uh, Northwestern Washington, Mount Vernon in 2020. Um, it will enter into its second year of cropping 
uh, crops this year. Um, an additional one that's going to be occurred at WSU Pialp is a diversified organic West Side Washington agriculture and will include uh, integrated livestock, um, tree fruit in the Wenatchee area, wine grapes in the, in the Prosser area. And in the short future, we're hoping to bring on a, um, a Columbia Basin potato oriented rotation um, that will likely take place in Othello in a dry lens site um, to be determined at this, at this point in time. And then lastly, I just wanna take a minute and talk about um, what I think is sort of the crux of how we sort of move forward um, is a program called the Sustainable Farms and Fields Program. Um, this was enacted by the legislature in 2020. Um, it only provided seed funding for the State Conservation Commission to sort of get it underway, come up with a system of how it would work. Um, and several people are working to try to secure funding. Um, the goal with to use this, the, these resources for is adoption and change at the landscape level. Um, this would include grants um, that would support um, practices that increase carbon sequestration in both vegetation and soil, um, but simultaneously to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and improve overall soil health. Some examples would include maybe purchasing shared equipment like no-till drills. Um, and uh, like I said, this is being led by the State Conservation Commission and, and we're hopeful to uh, move forward with um, uh, securing the funding to run that program. I just wanna point out that um, I mentioned sort of the, the three core um, collaborators, but from day one, um, there's been a whole variety of other um, industry representatives that have supported this effort. Um, and it's really brought together uh, groups of people from a, a diversity of backgrounds and interests um, that I think frankly have not always had a common conversation. So it's uh, really positive um, in, in that regard. Um, and I'll just end on um, some contact information. These are the associate leads for the for each of the tri agency um, uh, tri agency groups. And um, if you want to want to get more information, um, it, the URLs above there. But I know those can sometimes be kind of annoying to to write down or try to copy. Um, so you can access that by um, snapping a photo of or using your camera. Um, with that, Deirdre, I will try to take any questions if there are any. Um, <clears throat> well, doesn't look like there's any um, anything that's come up. All right, do I miss in that? Yeah, I think there's no questions right now. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Chris. Oh, there's actually, there is one that just came in. Um, how do you measure success with the Washington Soil Health Initiative? Okay, first I'll just plug that people should be engaging above um, with the, the feedback mechanism. Um, so how do we measure su success? Well, um, a lot of that is documented in the roadmap um, and uh, we'll, will sort of vary by region, by production system. Um, each sort of zone, um, uh, each sort of zone, um, I, I will bring that slide back up in here in a second, um, has very different um, sort of uh, uh, set of goal and milestones. Um, and so those are very important that we need sort of a, a flexible ability to uh, offer success at the statewide level, because they may be different in different areas, but there were clear common goals and milestones that um, came out of those discussions. Um, and I will say that there was actual discussions. I didn't point that out. Um, so I would reference that at this at this point in time. Um, uh, and I noticed there's a comment about trying to work with Oregon. I would love to see more states um, come online with such efforts. Um, I will point out in that roadmap that there is a breakdown of what is going on in the United States for other soil health initiatives. They're all over the map, literally. But um, in this case, uh, in terms of what their focus is, California probably has the best funded um, and uh, longest running, I would say, um, uh, initiative, but it's very different in what it does um, uh, to, uh, um, uh, than to Washington State. Um, as far as uh, the LTER sites open to the public, 
Uh, they will definitely be at certain points. I don't think we can just have people obviously roaming around research plots, but there will be associated field days, um, uh, um, et cetera. <clears throat> Okay, um, are there uh, Altair plans at Wilkie? Yes, there, there are. That is one of the ones that are hoping to come online of, um, in, the, in the near future. So will you ever go to actual growers to help measure and improve soil health? Um, I think if I'm understanding that comment or question um, directly is that, um, Yes, um, that is what the, the effort that was underway um, as part of the state of the soils assessment, though I should have pointed out that, that those samples all came from commercial farming fields. Um, and just to parallel with that, the goal of the Sustainable Farms and Fields Program um, is, uh, um, you know, the, the whole goal or sort of an impetus of that is to um, incentivize adoption, and that would include measurement on, on commercial fields. So, <clears throat> any, did I miss anything, Deirdre? Don't believe so. Okay. Great. Well, th thanks very much, Chris, for that overview of the soil.